Today is a huge day. We've got the SwitchBot Hub 2 with Matter and Apple HomeKit support. If you're new to SwitchBot, then this, well, honestly means nothing to you. But for existing users like myself, this update is something we've been waiting for for years. Let's get into it. So yes, this is a review of a smart home hub, and that's not something that you usually see here on the channel because quite frankly, they're usually boring and insignificant. Simply connecting your smart home products to the network and something I usually hide in a storage room. But SwitchBot has done this incredible job of transforming a smart home hub into something that's actually useful. So this hub connects all of your existing SwitchBot products like your SwitchBot curtains, temperature sensors, smart plugs, their famous bot smart button presser to your network so you can control them remotely from anywhere in the world. But now they've added a lot of additional features that improve from the previous hub, including a screen displaying temperature, humidity, two programmable buttons, a built-in IR blaster that's two times more powerful than the previous gen, including a kickstand on the back, and including a temperature and humidity sensor into the USB-C cord that's included in the box. All of which, by the way, is packaged into this extremely light design that's very minimal, yet incredibly powerful. It's really clear here that SwitchBot has decided to make this device useful on its own with thoughtful connectivity that earns a spot front and center in your home. In the SwitchBot app, you'll now get a summary of the hub, including the current temperature, humidity level, and room light. SwitchBot also gives you a graph of how that actually fluctuates over time. You can create a smart scene based on this data, say when your temperature gets too high, turn on the air conditioner via the IR sensor, or when the humidity drops too far, turn on your humidifier, or when it gets too bright, close the curtains in your room. You can do all of this through the SwitchBot app, but you can also do it through the HomeKit integration, which we'll get to a little later in the video. The hub also includes an IR blaster that can copy commands from your remote and then transforms your phone into a remote that can be controlled from anywhere in the world. Now, I don't have a lot of IR devices, but I was able to set this thing up with my Samsung TV and my soundbar really easily. So in the app, you can select the IR appliances. And the cool thing here is this new Smart Learn feature where you can simply point your remote at the hub, press power, and it'll capture that signal and easily learn the remote without needing to search for a brand or try a bunch of codes. And this setup worked really, really easy for me. And a fair question you might be wondering is why would you want this in your phone? But once you have these remotes on your phone, number one, you can control them from anywhere remotely. Number two, you can program them with scenes and other SwitchBot products. So you could say, once I come home, turn on the TV and change the input. This is the kind of things in smart homes that take some experimentation, but the sky is really the limit here when you start to understand what it can do. The hub also includes an NFC chip built in, so you can simply tap your phone to play any commands through Siri shortcuts or HomeKit. So with a simple tap, you could close the blinds, turn on the lights, open an app on your Apple TV, and I thought this was a really cool addition to the hub that they didn't need to add, but they did. The big feature about this hub is the HomeKit integration. At launch, this is limited to bringing in your hub's built-in temperatures and humidity sensors, switchbot curtains, and blind tilt products. But I have a feeling that this is gonna expand more products into HomeKit later on throughout the year. In the hub, go to settings, matter configuration, which is currently in beta, but I'm assuming the beta wording will disappear soon. This gives you a code that you can copy into HomeKit, then in the HomeKit app, you can add an accessory, choose the hub, then paste in your code. This will automatically pull your hub into HomeKit. If you have any other compatible devices, go back to the SwitchBot app and then go to Matter Configuration and add a secondary device. Adding a device here will automatically sync it into HomeKit in real time. So now with this support, I can do things like use my NanoLeaf lights to close my SwitchBot curtains in my office. It's a really exciting time for smart homes. And again, the sky is the limit. Apple launched Matter support quite a while ago, and I feel like this year HomeKit users like myself are finally getting the benefit of it. With more and more devices expanding into HomeKit, it seems like every day. Great news if you wanna get rid of all the smart home apps and just use a single one of them for everything. But if you're not into HomeKit, the hub also integrates with Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, If This Then That, and Siri shortcuts under the Cloud Services section in Settings. Now, assuming you're displaying this thing somewhere in your room, there's some customizations that you can make. First thing you notice is that the screen is really bright. So in settings, backlight and sound, you can turn on the auto brightness, which will monitor the light in the room and then dim the screen for you. You can turn on and off the chime played when you touch one of the buttons on screen. You can completely turn off the humidity and temperature sensor readings or the on off buttons, depending on what you're using this thing for. And overall, this is an extremely well-rounded hub with useful features packed into this thing. It's the only hub that I have on display in my home instead of tucked away in a storage room. And now with HomeKit support, the SwitchBot ecosystem just got way smarter. And if you wanna see how to take advantage of that, 
Stay tuned for some practical uses in a later video. Now, if you have any questions about how to use the integrations with SwitchBot, or you have creative automations that you're thinking of using, let me know all of that down in the comments now. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.